ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ايها الاحبه في الله المبادر الى الخيرات build your heart initiate good deeds we are alhamdulillah blessed that we are here in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the night of the 27th of the month of Ramadan the last 10 days of Ramadan blessed days where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to roll up his sleeves wake up his family and does i'tikaf in the masjid connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reflecting pondering over the creation over this dunya over the hereafter over the purpose of our creations this is the purpose my dear brothers and sisters of doing i'tikaf is to isolate yourself from people from your daily routine and connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see what kind of a life you are leading and how sweet this connection is if you don't really taste the sweetness of the connection it is because you have not been connected before Nothing, brothers and sisters, especially when it comes to worships, it is not easy to win against yourself and against the shaitan and against the dunya. It is not easy. It does not happen overnight. You will not enjoy the i'tikaf or the taraweeh or the fasting unless you have purified your heart got rid of all the mess that you may have in your heart by sincere repentance and by filling it up with goodness and righteous deeds. But if I give you a cup of coffee or a cup of water and I add more coffee on it when it's full, it's not going to take it. The same thing with our hearts. If the hearts are full with negative things and I come and I advise you you're not gonna take it you're not gonna like it why because your heart is full it does not have any room in your heart it is going to be rejected this is sometimes Prophet Muhammad sallallahu told us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kalla bal rana ala qulubihim arran it is when your heart is sealed because of the evil deeds. Sincere repentance is what we are definitely in need for. Sometimes we wonder, we talk to each other, we enjoin good and forbid evil, and no one responds. You tell the person the thing 10 times, and he's still doing the same wrong thing or the same innovation. Why? Did he not hear you? Yes, he heard you. But the problem is, he cannot take it. Two opposite things cannot reside in one heart. You cannot be a person who enjoys living with the Quran and at the same time enjoys living with music. You cannot. It's either this or that. You cannot tell me that a person who is hooked up to the masajid and at the same time he's hooked up to the bars or to the malls. Here is the best place for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he likes and over there the best place that the shaitan likes. How can you put something that Allah loves and something that the shaitan loves together? Doesn't work. Opposite direction. How can you have heaven and hell in the same place? It doesn't work. So brothers, these are the days that helps us work in our heart. Ten days you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything. Sincere repentance is the beginning. Once you repent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleans everything in your heart and now you will start listening, you will start submitting, you will start thinking, and you will start applying. And this is what we are trying to do here 
is to make you practice living with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the main purpose of cleaning our hearts and once your heart is clean you will be able to enjoy good and forbid evil if your heart is not clean and you see someone doing something wrong it's his problem this is how we see it it's his problem no it's his problem and your problem because your purpose here as some of the scholars said in joining good and forbidding evil is the sixth pillar of Islam how can you tell me that you are connected and you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you do all the good things and you see someone violating the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't move for it or you see someone how can you tell me that you love calling to Allah and you see someone clearly misguided how can you not help him if you see someone falling in a well, if you see a blind person crossing the freeway, you will jump and pull him out to save him. But a person directed or directing himself to the hellfire, it's none of your business. What kind of love is that? And what kind of enjoying good and forbidding evil is that? Abu Hurairah radiallahu anh reported that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Badiru bil a'mali sab'a. Badiru, start, initiate, hurry, do seven things, before, number one, هَلْ تَنْتَظِرُونَ إِلَّا فَقْرًا مُنْسِيَ What are you waiting for? To become poor, or to become rich, or to become sick, or to become old, or to die, or the time of the Dajjal, or the time of the hour. What are you waiting for? Why are you not hurrying and initiating good before any of those seven things might come? This is a hadith that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who loves us, the one who cares for us, advising us, commanding us to do that. This is similar to Sariu ila min rush, race, compete for a Jannah. This Jannah is there. And people, some people are going to fill it up. And this Jannah is expensive. And this Jannah is not for anyone. And this Jannah is surrounded by hardships. Listen to this. Hardships. Yani Jannah here. The most beautiful thing that you could ever think of. But all around it, very difficult hurdles that you have to pass before you get to the door. You may die, you may become sick, you're going to give up a lot of things, you're going to suffer, you're going to do a lot of dangerous things around the agenda and you have to drive through. Otherwise you're not going to get to it. That's why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala inna sil'at Allahi ghaliyah. Very valuable the Jannah. On the other hand, hellfire is very cheap. The worst life that you can ever think of, yet the road to it is so easy to get to it. Just follow your whims and desires, be yourself, listen to yourself, listen to the whispers of the shaitan, enjoy the sceneries around you, enjoy the alluring things in this life, you will go straight to hell. No questions asked. Patience on doing good and staying away, patience on staying away from evil is what gets you to Jannah. If you don't do that, then it would be the other way. Let's give you an example. If you're desperately needing for a place to live, and you heard that there is a house ready for rent, 
and this house is the perfect location that you're looking for and this house the price for it is what you are asking and you got the money what would you do you're desperately looking for a house and you heard that description of the house you would rush to the salesman regardless what time late or not late you would go if someone comes and tells you wait until tomorrow what do you say no maybe if I wait until tomorrow someone else will come and take it no I'm gonna go and do it for that this is how keen we are to accomplish our daily things in this world this is how much we care and how much we work hard to gain the things that we like in this world why can't we do the same thing for the hereafter how come when you tell a person these are the last 10 days of Ramadan come they would not say oh no you know they have plans there or something said so, no 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 we gotta cancel the plans and go because if we don't go we're gonna miss out and if it happens to be the night of Al Qadr or if it happens to be this and that Allah would not forgive my sins what if I die I will not make it no I'll cancel my plans and I go because I need the hasanat just like I need the house I need the hasanat I will come and do that but that shows us how much we are attached to the dunya and how much we are away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Badiru bil a'mal. Jawhar al a'mal. Aw jawhar hadihi al dunya ayuha al ahibbahu wal amal al salih. The essence, the core of this life is righteous deeds. If you don't have that, listen to this proof. What is the first thing that the person says? When death comes to him, Hatta Ida Jaa Ahadabum al Mautu Kala Rabbi Rjiun Kala Rabbi Rjiun Ila Ali Amanu Salihan Fima Tarak. يرجعون لإيش؟ لعلي أعمل صالحا جوهر الحياة العمل الصالح وعند الموت تريد الرجعة لعمل الخير. The first thing you say when the angel of death comes, Oh Allah, give me respite, give me a chance to go back so I can do righteous deed. That's the first thing you say. And look at the Answer, Kella. This is not the time. This is not the time. Awalam nu'am mirkum. Didn't we give you time? Didn't you live? Awalam nu'am mirkum ma yatadakkaru ma fihi man tadakkara wa jaakum un nadir. The messengers came to you. The signs of become old came to you. Prophet Muhammad told you that the average age 60 to 70 and you might be there or past that or getting close to that. You got all the signs. What stopped you from doing that? Kalla innaha kalima. Kalima ay rabbi rji'oon. Huwa qailuha kullu man haqqa alayhi al-adhaab min ahli al-nar sayaqool hadihi al-kalima. Every person who is destined to be in the hellfire, he will have to say, Rabbi rji'oon, O Allah, give me respite. Wa min wara'ihim barzakh. But it's over. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in another surah, وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لِمَا نُهُوا عَنْهُ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ Indeed, if we have given them respite, they will do the same thing that they were doing before, and they are liars. Because if the person has all those chances and did not come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so what good is that person? And Allah knows that they are lying. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا 
If you really believe that you're going to be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you believe that you're coming back to Allah, if you believe that there is an end to this world and there is time for the day of judgment, then why don't you do good? What are you waiting for? How many people you know, probably last year who were here and now they're under the ground? Are you different? Are we different? Look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said how he destroyed the previous nations. In Surah Al-Qamar, the people of Nuh, the people of Hud, the people of Ad, the people of Thamud, the people of Fir'aun, Musa alayhi salam. Then when he was addressing the people of Quraysh, look what he said. Qala akuffarukum. خَيْرٌ مِنْ أُولَٰئِكُمْ أَمْ لَكُمْ بَرَاءَةٌ فِي الزُّبُرِ All of those disbelievers that we have ruined, that we have punished severely, you think that your disbelief or the people who are disbelievers here are better than those people? Meaning that we're not going to punish them like we did to that? Or we have handed you a declaration that you are exempted from the punishment. What's the answer? None of the above. They are not any different and they don't have any declaration for being exempt from the punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to do good. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith, Badiru, start and start working. What for? So you can do a righteous deed that is going to be accepted and then it will qualify you to go to Jannah. Listen to Surah Al-Layl, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى أَعْطَى قَدَّمْ مال أو أي عمل قدموا في سبيل الله anything you give for the sake for the sake of Allah سبحانه وتعالى أعطى واتقى اتقى الله سبحانه وتعالى في جميع أحواله have تقوى of Allah in all situations وصدق بالحسنى and believed in the Jannah or believed in the rewards of Allah سبحانه وتعالى that He promised for those who do righteous فَسَنُ يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى We're going to pave his way. We're going to smooth his life. We're going to facilitate his life to doing good. You think you're wonderful because you're here? Who believes that he's wonderful because he's here? He believes that. I believe that. But there is a subliminal message there. I believe that I am wonderful being here because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped me being here. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me come here, made it easy for me to be here, gave me the life, gave me the support, gave me the guidance. I am here. So I am in a place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. And without Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would not be here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated the righteous deed for me to be here and for all of you. Brothers, think of this. If you gain everything that you wanted in this life, all the money that you want, and you became successful, you graduated from the college, and you took your master, and you took your PhD, and you have reached high status in the society, and you have gained all the desires that you like, you lived in the best homes, you married the most beautiful woman, you had children, and you've done everything, but you did not do righteous. You are the absolute loser. 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 قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَلَا ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ There is nothing more clear loss than the person who ends up in the hellfire regardless what he has accomplished in this dunya. Just like 
I told you before in a story that one of the righteous predecessors asked for an advice. He told his son, take me to Al-Hasan al-Basri. And he is a scholar himself. He said, I felt hardness in my heart. I need to soften it. Yes, I open the Mus'haf, it may work. I ask someone, but I need someone to really shake me up. I don't feel right. Wallahi believers know that. Wallahi brothers, if you are used to doing good and you stay away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for little, you feel like, you know how like when it's humid and you want to rip your clothes off and get out of them, you feel like this is, how is your heart? You feel wrong, something is wrong and it's not normal. If you feel that, then there's some goodness in you. Unfortunately, some people don't even know that they are sick. Some people don't know that they are ignorant. So he went there. And when he got to the house, the servant came out and she asked him, who are you? And he identified himself. And then she told him, what made you live until this corruption? So he started crying from that word. Because what made his heart hard? Corruption around him. All the things that take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was crying so loud, Al-Hasan al-Basri woke up to his cry. And he came and he asked him, what brought you here? He said, I felt hardness in my heart. Blind, picture this, blind, traveled, asked his son to guide him just simply to hear an advice, to soften his heart. Here, if we tell you brothers, we have a convention, the van is ready, air conditioned, food is there, rooms are already reserved, just come and spend your wonderful time there. We'll go with the bus empty or maybe a couple will be there. He just going for an advice, blind, he told him Al-Hasan al-Basri, he did not give him much talk because when you are a believer and your heart is wounded, any little word moves you. Any little thing moves you. Any little thing affects you. Look at Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an. With his power, with his might, with his harshness, especially on the wrongdoers, and on the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet when someone tells him, Ittaqillah, his knees shake and he collapses. Cannot take that word. It's so powerful to him to hear it. Even if, because the first thing that comes to his mind that he's, he might be doing something wrong. That's why he was worried about even an animal might trip miles and miles away from him because he was in charge. When your heart is like that, any little thing will move you. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Give a reminder because reminder benefit the believers. The believers that who are ready, their heart is ready. So he told him, advise me. Look what he told him. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِمَّا اتَّعْنَاهُمْ سِنِينَ ثُمَّ جَاءَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُوَعَدُونَ مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُمَتَّعُونَ أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِمَّا اتَّعْنَاهُمْ سِنِينَ ثُمَّ جَاءَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُوَعَدُونَ مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُمَتَّعُونَ Do you see that if we give all the pleasure that anyone might need years and years then the time of death comes and then after death is a hellfire what good did that enjoyment benefit them when their end is a hellfire he started crying more and more and he left 
His son is not like him. His heart is not really like him. He was talking to him all the time about Al Hassan al Basri. So when they left, he told him, Dad, that's Al Hassan al Basri? He said, Yeah, son. He said, I thought he's bigger than this. He said, Why you say that? He said, That's all he has to say? <laughs> he told him, he poked him hard in his chest. He said, لَقَدْ تَلَى آيَةً لَوْ أَلْفَتْ أُذُنًا سَامِعَةً لَتَرَكَتْ جُرُوحًا فِي الْقَلْبِ He said he has recited an ayah. If it was, if it landed on an attentive ear, it will leave wounds in the heart. But the ear is not attentive and the heart is sick. How can it influence or how can it affect? When you see two brothers fighting over anything and you come and you recite for them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in many ayat to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. وَمَا اخْتَلَفْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَحُكْمُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَإِنْ تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ If you tell him that, they will not listen. If you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no big deal. If you say Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you come to a person who is angry and you tell him, say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. He probably push you. He probably punches you, he probably even cusses you, he probably says something bad about Islam. Because the heart is not ready. The heart is not ready and that's why we need to work on that, my dear, dear brothers and sisters. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger called, Badiru bil a'mal. If someone comes and tells you, brother, today we have a function and we need few of the brothers to prepare the table or to bring the food or to do a cleaning or vacuum or something, anything good. And you answer, I don't have time, which is an ideal answer for every one of us. Always, always, we don't have time when it comes to doing something for the hereafter. That's the main answer is, I don't have time. This is the example of that person is like a doctor who studied for 30 years, who became board certified, who has opened a clinic and put the time on it, nine to five. Then a sick person comes. And then the doctor looks at him and he says, I don't have time to treat you. What would be the answer for you? Why did you open the clinic? Why did you study to be a doctor? Why did you do any of all of that stuff if you don't have time to treat your patients? What's wrong with you? This is not normal. This is not a normal person or a normal doctor. My dear brothers and sisters, a person who tells you, I don't have time when you ask him to do good, is a person who does not know why he is created, is a person who does not know where he is at, is a person who is totally lost. We came to this life, brothers and sisters, to do what? Lil amal salih to do good. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah created life and death to test you and to see who is among you the best in deeds, which is sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the deed and according to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radiallahu anha, one time Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam slaughtered a sheep or a goat and then he told her to distribute that. 
So he asked her, he said, what's left from that? You know, everybody likes meat. So she was given people. He said, what's left from that? She said, nothing left from it except the shoulder. She left the shoulder because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, likes the meat of the shoulder. Look at the answer of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu All of it is there except the shoulder. He corrected her. She said, all of it is gone except the shoulder. He said, no, all of it is there except the shoulder. Because anything you give for the hereafter is there. And anything you keep for this dunya is gone. Yabna Adam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, what are you? Something that you eat and it's gone. Something that you wear and it will rot out. And that is what dunya is. But when you give for the hereafter, you are putting it in a safe box and you will find it. وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Anything you do, you will find it with Allah. But anything you do for this dunya, it is gone. Abu Hurair radiallahu an reported a hadith that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, بينما رجل يمشي اشتد عليه العطش فنزل ذئرا فشرب منه ثم خرج. Person was from people before us, was walking, became thirsty, a well, and the wells that you know, for those people who lived in villages, it's not like the wells that you have here. It's not easy to get down, it's not easy to get the water, it's not safe, it's everything. So he managed to go down, got the water, drank water, climbed up, and that is extremely hard. As soon as he was on the top, on the surface of the earth, فَإِذَا كَلْبٌ يَلْهَثْ يَأْكُلُ الثَّرَى مِنَ العطش. A dog licking the ground from thirst. And you know, he can smell the water, but he cannot get to it, so he was just licking everything, hoping to find the water. قَالْ لَقَدْ بَلَغَ هَذَا مِثْلَ الَّذِي بَلَغَ بِي فَمَلَأَ خُفَّهُ he said, look at the reflection. He said, I was sick, I mean, I was thirsty, and I know how it feels when I was thirsty. So this dog was feeling like I am, or I was feeling. So he didn't say, oh, it was so hard, I'm glad that I already went down and came up, now I have to go down again. No. He said, Allah bi'in. He went down again. He took his shoe. He filled it with water. He has to climb. How can he hold the water and climb? He held it in his mouth. Shoe full with water, hold it in his mouth, climbed up to give it to the dog. This is the sincerity. This is the level of the sincerity that made him go through this hardship, feeling for that animal until he got up. He gave him the water. Allah forgive all of his sins. Companions asked a question. said, Oh Prophet of Allah, even animals we are rewarded for doing good. To them, he said, yes, in every living creature, you get a reward if you do something sincere. So brothers and sisters, we are here in a major mission. A major mission which is doing good. So we can be accepted and go to Jannah. More than 199 times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to believe and to do righteous. Amanu wa amilu salihat. Ask yourself a question. If you open a store, what do you do? You paint it, you beautify it. You get the signs, you put the merchandise, you arrange it, you advertise for it. You do everything possible to make it attractive so you can start your business. You did all of that. And then you wait. Few days, few weeks, no customers. Then little customers start coming. 
you gave it time. It's still very few customers coming. What would you do? If you are smart, you will close it. Ask yourself, what have you done good today? Have you visited a sick person? Has you given anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did you ever, or did you think, or did you help someone who is in need? Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to not only serve him, but also to have good relations with people. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wallahi, swearing, لَأَنْ أَمْشِي فِي حَاجَةِ أَخٍ مُؤْمِنْ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ صِيَامِ شَهْرٍ وَاعْتِكَافِهِ فِي مَسْجِدِ هَذَا Wallahi, I swear by Allah that if I go with a Muslim brother who is in need for anything, haja, nakira, any haja, it could be a jump, it could be a ride, it could be a dollar to drink, it could be a sandwich, it could be anything, haja. He is in need for something, a Muslim brother in need for something, and he's coming to you. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, Wallahi, I go with him in a different hadith, hatta abdiyaha lah, until I give him what he needs. It's more beloved to me. It's more rewarded in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than fasting a whole month and doing i'tikaf in the masjid of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Each salah in his masjid is how many? 100,000, right? No, he doesn't like that. How many? 1,000. A month fasting and praying and doing i'tikaf and all it took is to take someone, just like I said, it could be jump his car, five minutes, ten minutes, run out of gas, called you to start, called you to anything, something like that. It's more beloved to him than doing that i'tikaf. You know what we do? We always scratch our ears this way. We always want the hard thing. When you come and you tell a person to stop doing the haram, what's the first thing he tells you? It deen you, sir. Religion is easy. When you want to tell someone to do something very rewarding, instead of doing something that requires a lot of work to get it, he insists he wants to do the hard one. I give you an example. يقول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان له إمام أو من صلى مع إمامه حتى ينتهي كتبت له قيام ليلة كامل. If you pray with your imam until he finished the prayer, it is written for you that you prayed the whole night. How many of you believe in that hadith? And then you come, the brother, brother, can I come and do قيام? Okay, want to do qiyam, do qiyam. But did you hear the hadith? Yeah, but difference of opinion. But this is a hadith. This is a clear hadith that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu tells you that. But I want to pray more. Okay, you insist on more. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu prayed two rak'ah after he prayed with her. Pray two rak'ah and make him as long as you want. No. They want to debate and argue and everything. Okay, you want to go do it, do it. Do what you want. But here we are, the religion is so easy by itself. It's so easy. But we make it hard and that is a problem that we have because our faith and our belief is not the way that it should be. بَادِرُوا بِالْأَعْمَالِ سَبْعًا Prophet Muhammad وسلم, gave us a precise hadith. Do good, initiate good quickly and don't delay before seven things might come. Let's look at them. Fakran Munsiya. It was reported that one of the righteous predecessors said, Kan al Fakru al Kad al Fakru an Yakuna Kufra. Poverty is about to become like disbelief. Because when you are poor, brothers, sometimes you forget to pray. Why? Because you're looking for work. 
It makes you forget the rights for your wife, the rights for your children, the rights for other Muslims because you are looking for work. Imagine, brother, that a person doesn't have a ride or doesn't have the money to go home or a person doesn't have enough money to eat or a person sees his child rolling from one side to another and doesn't have the money to buy medicine for him. Reflect on our brothers in Pakistan right now. Reflect on living in a flood, living in diseases, no money, no home, no hope, children, elders, women, everything is there and you don't have anything, you can't do anything about it. Poverty can take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu used to seek refuge from the poverty because the person is so busy with other things and if the person is ignorant, he will become a kafir. Because he will start questioning why Allah does this to me and he's not doing it to the disbelievers. How come my believing brothers are not there? What kind of Islam is this when you see your brothers? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says something that you should not sleep with your stomach full when your neighbor is hungry. Look at the food that we throw away. Not only in here, but at home. Look how many kinds of food we eat. But when you come and ask someone for some help, he will start thinking. No, I need this and I need that and I need as if it never gonna happen to us. It will, brothers. So what are we waiting for? Fakr munsi. A fakr poverty that makes you forget the here after because of the need or the dire need for the money. Also, brothers, Rina Mutri. The second problem, do good before you become too rich. Yes. Too rich, richness that makes you exceed the limits. If you want to have a wedding, it must be in the best hotels. And it must be men and women together. And we should have the best band in there. And I should travel the whole world. And I should go to every beach there is. And I should go to all the clubs and the bars and taste everything in this life because I got the money. Now before, when you have just barely enough money, you're going from one masjid to another. But now you have all the money, look what your plans are. Seek refuge in Allah, do good before you are inflicted with that. The best thing that you can get. Look at one, one person, Lebanese person, had a bakery. Not actually, uh, uh, it's like a, a sweet shop. And he used to export a lot to the Khalij, to the uh, Gulf. Yani extremely rich. One time he came to the shop, checking on how they make the food and everything. He did not like the dough, the way they're making it. He took the dough, dropped it on the ground, stumped on it, stumped it and stepped on it and then the employee said oh mister oh mister and he told him look everybody in the world is eating from under my foot the very first or the very same person lost both of his knees and he is still alive living the worst kind of life in a hospital what happened to him became very rich and now he looks at other people, losers, and he sees himself as the best. The very best thing and the greatest things and the real hero, brothers and sisters, is the successful person. When you are successful, when you are rich, to be humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the real hero is you are successful, you are a big shot in the eyes of people, but in your own eyes, you're not. You're not like Karun. You cannot say, 
You know that what you got is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ma bikum min ni'matin fa min Allah. This is the real hero, is the person who humbles himself to the believers, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and sees himself nothing regardless how much he has. Look at the beautiful ayat. And look at the reflection that you should and I should get from that. Indeed, that the human being, our nature, we exceed limits, especially when, when we become rich. Look at the ayah after it. Inna ila rabbika ruj'a. You are definitely going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't let that slip your mind. It doesn't matter how big you are. You're going to die for sure and you're going to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you believe in that and if you make that all the time before your eyes, you will not commit Tughyan. كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَا يَطْغَى أَرْرَآهُ اسْتَغْنَى إِنَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الرُّجْعَ The third one, مَرَضًا مُفْسِدًا المرض يفسد الأحوال When a person is sick, when you're healthy, you talk with people, you're happy, you smile, you enjoy the food, you enjoy the drink, you enjoy the travel. If you sleep, you sleep good and everything. But when you are sick, you're nervous. You can't stand people. You're worried about yourself. People look at you, you look fine, but deep inside, I'm not fine. People might say, oh, mashallah, look at you, and deep inside, when you go home, you're sitting alone in your room, trying to figure out how to treat yourself, what doctor to go to. You're busy with yourself. What are you waiting? You're healthy now, why can't you do good? What are you waiting for? Sickness like that. Look at Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers, when, if, if the person has a problem with the stomach, or problem with the kidney, or problem with the teeth, or just simply a headache. Life is hell. You do not enjoy anything. You cannot even enjoy the best meal if you have headache. That's why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, Man asbaha minkum aminan fi sirbih mu'afan fi jasadih indahu kutu yawmih fa ka'annama hizat lahu dunya kulluha aw bihadhafiriha He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if you wake up safe in your home yani you're not scared, you're not worried healthy in your body you have food for today you own the whole world you own the whole world. Can you imagine? Safety, health, and food. Main three ingredients. It has to be all present to enjoy your life. Miss one of those, your, your life is horrible. You will not enjoy your health or your food if you're scared. And you will not enjoy life if you're sick, food, is there. Safety is there, but you're sick. No good. Healthy and safe. No food. What good is life? Three ingredients that we have, and alhamdulillah brothers, we have it. So what are we waiting for? Prophet Muhammad وسلم, added the fourth one, said, Haraman Mufannida. You live yourself, your life as a disobedient. And then you become very old. You repeat the, the same things a thousand times. You tell your children, your grandchildren the same story over. You tell them, bring me the food and they already brought you the food six times. You become hallucinating. You become saying things to the point that people are getting sick and tired of you more than a child. Because the child, they can say, well, the child doesn't understand, but he is an old man. You become a burden to the point that your children may say, let him rest, let him rest. In reality, oh Allah, take him so I can rest because I'm sick and tired of him 
and sick and tired of his life and the way he conducts. Why? Because he wasn't good. You think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take a believer and make him live until he becomes like that? Absolutely not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ that the person grows and lives, then he becomes to the feeble stage. Except those who do good believers, they will not go back to that age. The older you get, the smarter you are, the more honored you are, the more beloved you are with the people. People enjoy your company. Look at the scholars. Look at the scholars, the age that they reach, and you enjoy listening to their speeches and their talk and everything because you take care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands when you are young and he will take care of you when you are old. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to seek refuge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring him back to the feeble stage. This is something that we all should do. Aw mawtan mujhiza, aw mujahiza. What are you waiting for? Death? Death comes, doesn't knock at your door, doesn't send you a text message, doesn't give you any marks. It comes, it can come when you are asleep, it can come when you are sitting behind your desk, it can come when you are driving your beautiful car, it can come when you are sitting on the side of the street, it can come when you are in the graveyard, it can come when you are doing anything. Death can come anytime to you. What are you waiting? A man purchased a home. He sees that the walls are too dark. So he said he want to paint it something bright. So he did. He need a marble table, one piece, because more than one piece is not that uh, يعني, uh, good or it's not luxurious like one piece. So he got it. He got everything he want. He built it the way he wants. He put the pillars in the house. He built it perfectly ready to live in it, then angel of death knocked the door. Before he lived in it one day, or he died before he lived in it one day, he prepared everything and made everything good, but he didn't get to live in it. We worry about dunya. When one person asked Al-Hasan al-Basri, why people hate death? Why when you talk to people about death, they tell you, oh, you're so pessimist, that's all you talk about. You, you, you just talk about forgiveness, talk about the Jannah, talk. Well, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu told us to talk about death a lot, and remember it a lot. قَالْ لِأَنَّهُمْ عَمَّرُوا دُنْيَاهُمْ وَخَرَّبُوا أُخْرَاهُمْ فَكَرِهُوا أَنْ يَخْرُجُوا مِنَ الْعُمْرَانِ إِلَى الْخَرَابِ he said, because they have beautified their dunya, their homes in dunya, and they destroyed their homes in the hereafter, so they hate to move from beautiful homes to destruction. They didn't do anything good for the hereafter, so how can you leave this thing that you are doing in this dunya to something there? But a person who is attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person who does good, doesn't feel that way. He loves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves to see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for him. Because he's not attached to here, he's attached there. He is a, tra he is a, a traveler. He is a traveler in this dunya, and the abode is the hereafter. And then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Awi Dajjal, 6-1, or what are you waiting for? The Dajjal, Fasharru fitnatin tuntadar. Dajjal is from Dajjal, liar. This Dajjal would come and claim that he is God. Allah gives him the power. Allah gave him the power to test us. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu told us to seek refuge in him after every salah. Dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al-nar, wa min adhab al-qabr, wa min fitnat al-mahya wa al-mamat, wa min fitnat al-masih al-Dajjal. He would have two, a Jannah and a Hellfire. His Jannah is Hellfire and his Hellfire is Jannah. Command the sky to rain, it will rain. Command the ground to bring vegetations, it will. Command the mountain to change to gold, it will change to gold. Kill a person and revive him. All this given to him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he sallallahu alayhi wa said, if you heard about him, don't even get near him. Don't rely on your faith. 
Don't check it out. Take a different route. Live in Mecca or Medina. Make this dua. Memorize the first thing ayat of Surah Al-Kahf. All that will protect you from the Dajjal. So Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, the fitna of the Dajjal is so strong too, he's saying, why can't you do good from now? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from that fitna, just like he will protect you from being too rich and extravagant or being too poor to the point that you don't have time to do anything or being too sick. Why don't you prepare yourself for that? Then finally, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or you're waiting for the hour, the day of judgment, when Israfil blows on the trumpet. And this is the absolute, it's over. Brothers and sisters, this hadith is urging us to work good and to work hard and to not say, I will. It's not I will in the future. I'll do now. Do it now. If you can do it, do it now. I used to think one of the tabi'een said, Tafakkur sa'a khayrun min ibadat sana. Just to reflect one hour. And here it means a minute or any time. Better than a whole night of, or a whole year of prayer. Thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not his entity, but thinking about his beautiful names, his beautiful attributes, his power, his mercy, how he created this world. Look at the world, look at the creation, look at this dunya, look at the hereafter. When you see people in the street, when you see people walking, working, when you see people in the masjid and other people drinking, and you see some people enjoying themselves and some people holding the Quran and reading, some people raising their hands up and some people living like this is it, dunya is it. <laughs> when you see people do it, just reflect. Just reflect. Wallahi brothers, I used to think that too much work is what gets us to Jannah. It's not. Wallahi, if you see some of the companions, they did not have much of good deeds or much of prayers or much of charity or anything. It is the truthfulness in doing good, the, the, the right intention, the sincerity, and the best thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will reward and he will take care of you when you are with him and he is powerful and he can punish and he is very fair and just. If you believe in that, this is what we call فَلَوْ صَدَقُ اللَّهَ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ If you are truthful with Allah, it would be, have been better for you and this would lead you to the right path insha'Allah and reflect on yourself. Look at yourself, where you came from. Who are you to be arrogant? Who are you to think that you are better than others? Who are you to say that I am good? How and how many times Allah sends you a message or something that your deeds are accepted? Or you are too beloved to me, that's why I gave you. No, we don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that Sometimes he makes you rich, not because you are beloved to him. It's a test. It's a punishment actually for the disbelievers. And sometimes he makes you poor because it's good for you. Because if you become rich, you will be bad. And Allah likes you and he wants to take care of you. So he kept you where you should be. That's why you always be happy in whatever situation you are in. Whatever you have, be happy with it. Say Alhamdulillah. Don't look at other people. You heard the ayah that I said, وَلَوْلَا أَن يَكُونَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا أَيْ مُسْتَمِعِينَ عَلَى الْكُفْ لَجَعَنَّا لِمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ لِبْيُوتِهُمْ سُقَفًا مِنْ فِضَّةً If it's not for people that might follow the same path, Allah will bless the disbelievers with every worldly thing that they desire. Because, أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ مَتَّعْنَاهُمْ سِنِينَ Because if they enjoy it, and then the end is hellfire. مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُمْ What good is that? So brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful night. This is a blessed night. This is a beginning. Read Quran, listen to the Quran, enjoy good, forbid evil, work on your heart, build up your heart, initiate good, enjoy good and forbid evil. But enjoying good and forbidding evil also requires knowledge. It's not simply because I think it is right. You should know it's right. You should know what the person is doing is haram. 
and you should have your proof. It's not I am right and you are wrong. No, I need to verify what you're doing is wrong and I need to have the proof that what I'm telling you is right and I have to have the right way and the right etiquette and the right manner to come and ask you. And I have to also keep in mind if you don't take my advice, I'm not going to fight with you and I'm not going to look at you like you are an evil person. I will continue to work with you until Insha'Allah, Allah will guide you to what is right. But if I come and put my advice to you and expect everyone to take it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So brothers, the more knowledgeable you are, the more humble you should be. And it should reflect on you. Actually, for the knowledgeable person, he sees himself ignorant. The more knowledge you get, the more ignorant because you compare yourself with people who are more knowledgeable than you. But when the person sees himself that he's got it, that when he should know, he is absolutely ignorant. Which we have double ignorance, as people say. Brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and reward you in this blessed night. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our righteous deeds. Love one another, take care of one another. And remember that we are believers. And we are united on La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We are in the masjid, in the best place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. Let's keep it that way and let's stay connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all through the night and all through the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Jazakumullahu khayran. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ulaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You get a couple of minutes if you have. A question, inshallah, the Qiyam is going to start.